Veterans Day is tomorrow, but today we are honoring service members a day early with a long list of events and ceremonies. But it really is important to continue honoring those who served every day. To tell us more about how we can do that, we're joined by Iowa Department of Veterans Affairs Commandant Todd Jacobus. First off, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I appreciate the invitation to be here. And second, so this is your second year in the role. Can you tell us what it was like last year and now what you're looking forward to this year? So my first day on the job last year was on November 7th. Wow. And Veterans Day was on a Friday last uh -huh. year and it was an intense week getting, getting ready for all the events that we had taking place at the Iowa Veterans Cemetery and the Iowa Veterans Home. But it was a great week and uh, this week has been as well, equally as busy. Sure, so what events do you look forward to? There's a lot going on, whether that be free meals or ceremonies. What does it look like for a veteran? There are so many opportunities. Iowans are so generous and so appreciative of our veterans community. Mm -hmm. um, today, uh, we are observing uh, Veterans Day today uh, with Governor Reynolds, Lieutenant Governor Gregg, uh, and we will be out at the Iowa Veterans Cemetery at eight o'clock this morning. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll have our annual Veterans Day program then. Uh, our keynote speaker there is a major retired Sean Quinlan, a United States Marine retired, who is an Iowan by choice. Mm -hmm. He moved here uh, after retiring, or he stayed here after retiring from the Marine Corps. So we're looking forward to hearing from him. Mm -hmm. And we will have a program at 1030 today at the Iowa Veterans Home in Marshalltown. Uh, Rick Fredrickson, also a former Marine and a news reporter as well. Oh, wow. He's our keynote speaker. He's a Vietnam veteran. And uh, so those two events will be, will be taking place. And those are official Iowa events where um, we'll have a leadership team present. And, uh, but there are events taking place throughout our state, mm -hmm. high schools. I was in Grundy Center High School yesterday where they had a wonderful celebration led by their National Honor Society and uh, just a great event where the American Legion and AMVETS had a joint color guard. The community was present. Students from uh, all classes were present. So it was just a really neat celebration. And I've attended dozens of those over the years and just, just really nice programs. Sure. It's such a big day for veterans as we thank them for their service, but what can civilians take away from this day? I, I think that the biggest thing that a civilian should take away from this is that um, an appreciation for those Mm -hmm. You know, who I say, you know, separated themselves from this 320 million person formation that we know as the United States of America by, by serving our country, mm -hmm. um, giving up a lot of things in order to, in, in order to be, uh, be a member of the United States Armed Forces. And, you know, sometimes that is easier than others. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've seen veterans who have truly put their lives on their line because you know they, they, they definitely have served and sacrificed regardless of the character of their service or where they were, or how, they, uh, how they served, you know. Bottom line is, is they, they, they did uh, separate themselves from the rest of our community by serving and um, this is a great way just to say thank you every year. Mm -hmm. I know it should be more than a day, so what can we do ever like all year? Yeah, you know, I, we have veteran service organizations throughout our state. Um, and I'll tell you that there are veteran service organizations that are closing their doors permanently because of a lack of, you know, I'd say community involvement and also membership. You know, young veterans are not voting or are not uh, joining those organizations. So number one, I would encourage veterans to join our service organizations. You know, they are the a vibrant part of our communities mm -hmm. and they really reinforce and instill a patriotism level within our community that that is desperately needed today. And, uh, um, and, and in some places, those veteran service organizations, the American Legion halls, the VFW halls, I mean, they are part of that community. They are, that's where people come to gather and have meals. So mm -hmm. please, support those, please support those organizations. Absolutely, any final thoughts for us this morning? You know, I would say that uh, I, I, so many veterans that I've talked with have endured uh, some real trials while in military service. I have never met one who has told me that they wish they never would have made the decision to serve. So I think that's very important. People listen to stories that uh, veterans share their stories and they're a little bit wondering, I don't know if I would really want to do that. Um, our nation depends on our armed forces uh, around the world and our world depends on the United States. So I would challenge people to give, give service in the United States Armed Forces some consideration and uh, please become a member of our veterans community at some point in the future. Absolutely, those stories are important, their service is so important. So 
thank you so much for coming in this morning and to share that. And thank you so much for your service. I as appreciate well. it. Yeah, thank you.